So the week ended on yet another low note. A comedian at a union dinner was censured severely for having told a blue joke which involved Tony Abbott and his Chief of Staff Peter Credlin. This was presumably a reference to the rumour that the two have been having an affair, a rumour which has been doing the rounds for at least four months and has so far produced not a whimper or a murmur or even a giggle. But this week everything changed. Suddenly this week everything has to be oh so politically correct. And not only has the language changed, but according to the Australian at least, the numbers have changed. The Gillard government now hangs on by the skin of its teeth, grasping power by the slenderest of threads. Well, does it? According to the Australian, in a lengthy piece last Thursday, the numbers are now absolutely even. 74 each, with one independent swinging, and the Speaker out of the fray but ready to exercise a casting vote. But let's just have a look at this. For starters, the article says this is how the tides would vote if it came to a no supply motion or a no confidence motion in the government. Well, for starters, it's not going to come to a no supply motion. That's not on, everybody knows it's not on, Abbott would not be supported even by his own loyalists in the party if he tried to move such a motion. So drop that for a start. But a no confidence motion is always a possibility, so let's see how the numbers really line up. Labor has 70 party members in the chamber and they can all be relied on. Craig Thompson is no longer a member of the party, he sits on the cross benches, but he has pledged his undying support. That makes 21. Then there is Adam Bant, the Green. It would take an earthquake to make him vote against Labor and vote in favour of Tony Abbott. That makes 72. Then there are Tony Windsor and Rob Oakeshott, and both of them are very unlikely to change sides at this stage given their open opinion of Tony Abbott and their insistence that frivolous no confidence motions won't even be entertained. So that makes 74. And then of course there is the Speaker, Hannah Burke, Labor, who if her vote is required would obviously vote with the government, making 75, and that's half the House of Representatives. But what about the opposition? OK, well, they now have 72 paid-up members since uh, the defecting national from Western Australia, Mr Crook, has rejoined the National Party. But then, on top of that, they've got Catter. Catter, of course, was a national and he would normally vote with the opposition, but remember, Catter is bound by what was an oath taken by all the independents at the beginning of this parliament not to support frivolous no confidence motions only to vote on no confidence motions in the direst of circumstances which this clearly isn't so Catter can't be counted on um, Wilkie from Tasmania okay with Wilkie all bets have been off since Gillard reneged on her deal on poker machine reform so he can be called a genuine swinger, but once again he was bound by that agreement not to vote on no confidence motions unless and until that there is an absolute crisis. Which leaves who? Yes, Peter Slipper, the former Speaker. And incredibly, the Australian regards him now as a rusted on coalition vote, an absolute certainty to vote for Tony Abbott. The man who has denigrated him, sworn about him, tried to get rid of him by every means, open, shut and nefarious, and at last count was trying to bully him out of Parliament while Julia Gillard was defending him to the death, allowing him to go with dignity. So which side would Slipper more likely vote? It seems to me to be a no-brainer. But then, obviously, the Australians relying on everybody to have no brains, as always.
Just start taking the medication again, boys. It's not over yet. And I'm Mungo McCallum. <laughs> Good one. <laughs>